Good evening and welcome to the special Vote 2014 edition of Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Tonight's show is a debate sponsored by Clean Elections. We'll hear from candidates competing for Arizona's Superintendent of Public Instruction. Now, as with all of Arizona Horizon's debates, this is not a formal exercise. It's an open exchange of ideas, an opportunity for give and take between candidates for one of the state's most important offices. Interjections, even interruptions, they are allowed, provided that all sides get a fair shake and we'll do our best to make sure that that happens. The state superintendent's office oversees all of Arizona's public schools, including charter schools. And two candidates are competing to be Arizona's next top schools chief. The candidates are in alphabetical order, former Peoria School Board President Diane Douglas and Arizona State University education professor David Garcia. Each candidate will have one minute for opening and closing statements. Earlier, we drew numbers to see who goes first, and that honor goes to Diane Douglas. Thank you, Ted. I'm Diane Douglas. My husband and I moved to Arizona. We chose Arizona to raise and educate our daughter here. As she went through school, I began studying and serving our education system. It's not about a bureaucratic office or an ivory tower that turns our children into numbers. It's about a candidate who's been on the front lines of education and understands how to make the tough leadership choices. I've worked with school budgets and made those hard decisions. We searched out fraud and we, we cut administrative expenses when I was on the Peoria School Board. I saw firsthand what students, parents, and teachers deal with on a daily basis. That's the type of experience that I will bring to the Department of Education to serve you and your children. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. And for our next opening statement, we turn to David Garcia. Thanks, Ted. I'm David Garcia, and I'm running for Arizona State Superintendent of Public Instruction. My education story is like many of our students. I graduated from Arizona Public Schools. I, uh, however, my path was a little rough. I had to go through the military. I joined the Army when I was 17 to get the money to go to college. I'm proud to say I'm the first in my family to graduate from college. I went to ASU and then had the privilege of getting a PhD from the University of Chicago. Now, I'm a public school parent. I have two daughters in public schools, and I want them to be in great schools along with every other student in Arizona. In addition, I want them to be ready for the fast-changing world that they're going to face. I'm also in a great position with the experience to lead. I was the associate superintendent for the state of Arizona. That means I was in the office next door. Ready, I'll be ready to go day one. And in addition, I've got the coalition of education and business leaders behind my campaign to have a positive impact on Arizona public education. All right, thank you both. Let's get it started here, Diane. What do you see as the superintendent's job? Well, we know that the superintendent has to have an absolute leadership position, and we have to set the tone and direction for education. And we have to ensure that the education system that we have is is directed and controlled by Arizonans. And that's what I see as the superintendent's job. We can't have our, our education system mandated from outside. What do you see as the superintendent's job? Superintendent is, is the leader of our K-12 system. They obviously create policies and work with the state board and the state legislature as an important, important advocate for public schools. They also are the one that set the tone for the direction our public school system should be going. And in this case, it means our superintendent is mostly responsible for making sure our students are ready to contribute and our state is ready to contribute to a 21st century economy. You both mentioned uh, setting the tone. You have said that we have lost sight of what the founding fathers uh, intended for education. Well, what do you mean by that? Absolutely. Our education system has turned into one predominantly of job training and we have people in the ivory towers and in academia that actually have the audacity to refer to our children as human capital as if the only goal that they should have in life is to become worker bees. Well, no, we have to educate the whole child. We have to make sure that our children are not only ready to contribute to society, but know how to be self-governing adults to perpetuate the blessings we've had in this country. And you've, you said that we've lost sight of what made education, our education, the, the envy of the world. Is that what you're talking about? That's part of what I'm talking about. When our children no longer study American history the way they should to understand what we've been given as a country, when they're not taught the basic skills that they need, that's why our children in too many cases just can't read the way they should because the academic ivory towers have turned us away from what works. You've been in some of those ivory towers apparently in academia and you're proud of it. Um, do you 
you agree that we've lost our way? Well, I agree that we need to continue to move forward. Education's always going to need to change, Ted. The world around us is changing. How our students get information, the world that they're going to be ready for, the use of technology, and the idea that our students are going to be competing with students throughout the rest of the country. And we need to get them ready. If we're going to get them ready for life, we've got to get them ready for that type of competition and to be ready to contribute and do new things out in society. But have we lost sight of what our education system used Used to be. Was it the envy of the world and not anymore? Do you agree with that? Ted, everything's changing. If we go back, which is something my opponent has, has advocated for, we take a step backwards and the rest of the world passes us by. What education is about is moving forward, new ideas, new questions, better answers, and the opportunity for our students to go out and find new ways. That's what, that's what, most of our, that's what all of our discoveries are about, are asking new questions and getting new answers. Let's talk about Common Core. Now, this has been a staple of your campaign. You are against Common Core. Why? I'm against Common Core for many reasons because, number one, it's not going to prepare our children the way it needs to. It's untested, unproven. It hasn't um, been shown to be internationally benchmarked. We were made a lot of promises in the beginning when it was put into place, when it was put into place sight unseen. And that's not going to help our children. Uh, you, you've mentioned it rivals what's been done in communist China. You really believe that? I was making the comment about data collection and where they say Common Core is one issue, it's not. It encompasses all of education and it has a massive data collection system included with it. The, the, the idea that Common Core is a top-down uh, government to control of our education system, y you agree? Ted, if, 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 if high academic standards were top-down, federally driven, akin to communist China, I would be against them as well. The reality is that's not what they are. What academic standards are, are simply what students need to know and be able to do at the end of each grade level. We've had standards in Arizona for over 20 years, and every version has been better and modified from the one before. And what my, what my opponent is advocating is that we go back to essentially aims and standards that are insular, that apply only to Arizona. And as I mentioned, the reality is our students need to be ready to compete outside of Arizona. And Arizona businesses need workers that are going to attract business from other states in order to invest in Arizona. Respond, please. To assume that we don't know how to teach our children the skills here in Arizona and that there aren't some skills that are absolutely I'd say countrywide, nationwide, universal is just a ridiculous contention. We had um, Arizona standards. It's a shame that my opponent doesn't know the difference between the Arizona standards we had and the Ames test, which was where the breakdown was. But that we have standards now that we can't control, we can't change, and we can't make sure they work for Arizona, that's a huge problem for Arizona education. Ted, even, my, even in within, my, within my opponent's party, her position is extreme. The uh, folks are ready to implement the high academic standards in the way that is best for Arizona. States develop these standards, states can change them. And I will tell you, I'm in a, I am ready to be in a position in a, as a national leader to make sure that, the, uh, that our academic standards work best for Arizona. But the idea that Common Core was snuck through in the dead of night with no public debate and the parents were knocked out of the loop as far as discussing this and implementing this, and this again, is, is President Obama's way of Ted, trying to get into you, Arizona education? And absolutely not. You can go back and there were public hearings by the State Board of Education and even across crosswalk from the Arizona academic standards to the Common Core standards so that the public can underst could understand what was changing. This is a continuation of academic standards that we've had for a long time. And at this point, if we want to get our students ready for life after high school and our state in the best position to be competitive and strong, we must benchmark to national standards. We did not have public hearings. I was on a school board and I absolutely believe that the first people that would have heard would have been school boards. When it was brought in, the Race to the Top application, we were never told that it would totally dismantle education the way that we know it. And I can't help but wonder when my opponent speaks about national leadership if he's just looking for this position to be an opportunity to jump to another level where I'm committed to the parents and the students of Arizona. Ted, let me be clear for just a second. I have never run for office. My opponent has run twice and has lost twice. This is my first time. I'm not running for an office. I'm running for this office because I'm best qualified in order to move our state forward in education. Does it matter who's behind something like Common Core if Arizona educators want it and if Arizona parents want it and if Arizona students are educated by it? 
First of all, we have absolutely nothing to prove that Arizona students are being educated by it to a higher standard than we had before. We are overwhelmingly hearing from Arizona parents that no, they don't want it for their children. They're disappointed, they're, un they're angry that it was snuck in at the dead of night without their input. There were no public hearings. And now it's about time we ask the parents of Arizona what they expect for their children and not academia telling them what they they must expect. Untested, snuck through, it's They're, not good for Arizona. Let's be clear again, Acad we've had academic standards now for 20 years and every iteration has been better than the one before. I'm a parent, I have two daughters in elementary school and I want them to be ready to move into a 21st century economy. But Ted, let me tell you, we've got issues in Arizona that were here before Common Core they're going to be here after Common Core, and these are going to be the issues we're going to have to address as a state. We've got funding that needs to be restored. We have teacher positions that aren't being filled. We have huge achievement gaps and, and uh, um, outcome issues that need to be addressed. These are the issues that I'm going to focus on as superintendent. And indeed, I want to focus on that in debate here in a second here, but back to you and Common Core, because this is, again, this is basically what you've been running on. If you were to lose this election, do you see this as a referendum on Common Core? And would you then say, all right, the people have spoken, they want this for now? Well, that will certainly be the people's decision, but I think the primary was a referendum on Common Core. And the, th the issue of this debate of this election is who controls the education of our children. Is it the Washington insiders and the special interests of corporate, corporate America? Or is it the parents of Arizona, the parents all across the nation who have the first and foremost say in the education of their children? Last question on this. Sure. In, in order for Common Core, these standards and, and eventually a park test, I would imagine, to succeed, you got to get buy-in. You got to get parents and teachers to agree. If there are parents, uh, uh, your opponent says that she's heard overwhelmingly from parents well, that they are against this. Sure, let me address this. I'm a parent and I want my daughters to be ready. I don't want us to take a step back as a state. I want us to continue to move forward. Second, I have the backing of business leaders and education leaders. And for example, the last four Arizona Teachers of the Year are on board with my campaign. They're ready to, to teach to rigorous standards. They re they're ready to teach, teach to critical thinking skills. And they're embracing high academic standards. And that is what I'm hearing on my, on, from, from my perspective. Two recent Republican schools chiefs have come out uh, against your campaign. One of them said that uh, they were against extremism and nonsensical ideas. They were talking about you. How do you respond to that? Again, the issue is who controls the education of children. All due respect to one of those former education chiefs, she left the state in the middle of her term. So we need people who are here and who are committed to Arizona, and that's what I am. I am committed to Arizona families. Let's talk about school choice. Arizona is a school choice leader. I'm assuming both of you would like the idea for that to continue. If we're such a leader in school choice, why are we not a leader in academic achievement? We have to be, um, we are in many, many ways. One of the problems with things such as Common Core is they're one size fits all. And when you expect the same outcome for every single child, we're talking about precious human beings here, and we have to nurture their talents Ted, that can are we answer the question on school are, 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 are you saying too much, is the reason that the academic achievement is not there too much testing, too much what? There are, we have been driven by the test. What I saw when I was on the Peoria School Board was instead of making sure that children were in all of their academic content, we would pull them out because we were driven by the test and fear of the test. And it's even worse now that teachers' um, performance pay and their evaluation and principals' evaluations are going to be determined by what happens in a snapshot on too many standardized tests. Why aren't we doing any? I know you're for school um, choice well, as well. I'm for school choice. I'm for school choice because I don't think there's the best school out there, but I do think there's the best school for your child. I have two children, seven and five. They're very different. Sometimes I think they have different parents. And I'm glad we have different options available for, for students to match their interest with the interest of the school. Now, on assessment, I have been clear with a plan on how to address and make education more relevant. 
We'll still have standards, we'll still have assessments, they just won't count for 96% of how we evaluate schools. And in its place, we're going to put in real world indicators that matter, that get students ready for life after high school. And let me give you a few examples. Getting a career and technical education certificate, maybe AP credits, certification in a programming language, proficiency in multiple language, uh, world languages, maybe um, finishing a rigorous curriculum. Those are outcomes that would be fantastic to get our students ready for, this, for the world of tomorrow. And I guess if my opponent and hadn't been hiding in academia, he'd realize all of these things have been going on in our schools in Arizona. We have a phenomenal JTED program. We're part of the Westmec program in the Peoria School Ted, District, and that has done wonderful things for our Ted, children. Ted, here's the situation. It's not included in our evaluation system that my opponent mentioned. Yes, it's happening. Schools aren't getting credit for it, and I'd like that to happen. And speaking of hiding, um, my opponent you know this is also a, an issue, has been hiding quite a bit to previous debates and other opportunities for the two of us to be together so that the, our, our public, the public can see the difference between us. And uh, this is a situation accusing me of hiding. Um, I actually think my opponent's been hiding for the last few weeks. Response to that? I have absolutely not been hiding. We have been meeting and greeting voters all over the state. We've been doing interviews on radio and in print. But we're not here to talk about what my opponent would like my campaign schedule to be. I'm here to talk about education. Well, let's talk campaign schedules for just one, one second, Ted. The first week of October, there are five debates in four different counties. There's a Tea Party debate in Pinal County, a Valley Interfaith debate in Maricopa County. There's a University Women debate in Yavapai County, League of Women Voters in Tucson, and a Univision debate in Maricopa County. I have confirmed my attendance to every single one of those, and I'm asking my opponent to do the same. I am not, sir, allowing you to run my campaign schedule. I thank you very much for wanting to be my schedule scheduler, but I have a very capable, wonderful woman doing that, and I'm here to talk about education. So I want to be clear that the answer is no. Okay, okay. Let's get back to the idea of school choice, and, sure. and, and let's get the charter schools. I mean, some would say that the charter schools have not been meeting expectations. They're not doing as well as public schools. Are, are charter schools good for Arizona? I think charter schools are great for Arizona. Why are they um, meeting expectations? Well, charter schools uh, are do just as well as traditional public schools. What you find is there are charter schools at the high end that do really well and charter schools who serve at-risk students and, and may not have some of the highest assessment scores. See, here's what's exciting about school choice in Arizona is charter schools have allowed schools to get smaller and more specialized. And it's something that I'd like to see our traditional public schools have the opportunity to do as well. What do you think? And that is something I have absolute in experience in when I was on the Peoria School Board. We started growing our system from what was basically a one-size-fits-all system to offering magnet programs and special traditional programs so that parents could find the need that they wanted fulfilled within the system. But absolutely, parents have to be the driver of their children's education. Do you think for-profit charters are good for Arizona? I think that anybody who doesn't believe there is not a ton of profit in education, even in the public school system, is fooling themselves. Is that a yes or a no? I think whatever works for the parents, and they need to decide that. We need to give them the tools that they have to pick. And believe me, if those for-profit charter schools are not serving the need of the parents, those parents will be walking and leaving. For-profit charter schools, for-profit education in general, your thoughts? Well, I think this is an opportunity to talk about an issue we have, another one we need to address, and that is our school funding system here in Arizona. Ted, we've got two school funding systems, one for traditional public schools and one for charter schools. We need the opportunity and the leadership, and I've worked the state legislature on budget issues to to handle uh, these types of issues and what we have right now is a situation where we need one system for all schools we call public and that include to me that means less regulation on behalf of our traditional public schools and more transparency on behalf of our charter schools but this is a major issue um, that we need to address our school funding our school finance system is 40 years old we've been patchworking it for a while and it's it's time to start over and simplify so yeah your nay for-profit charter schools for-profit education in general I think in this case um, we want to make sure that charter schools, any school, is getting the job done. I will tell you that the Charter School Association has been very uh, strenuous and rigorous about closing down charter schools that uh, do not meet expectations. Um, and as a governing body, um, I, I have been in agreement with, uh, with their direction. As far as uh, the legislature reinstating inflation adjustment education funds, this is obviously still being worked out. But uh, obviously, there, some money has to go back, will likely have to go back. 
will you push for that money to go back and where should that money go? What we need to talk about is what's really important in education funding, Ted, and that's finding a new way, not just to tweak funding formulas or start a new funding formulas, but way to get ways to get money into education without further burdening our taxpayers or crippling our economy here in Arizona. And one of the ways I propose to do that is by using our state land trust. It was set up for Arizona schools. It was in Intended to help fund the schools, but yet in a hundred years we've barely sold any of that land. We need to put that land to work so it creates new property taxes that go to our schools. So, will you? Do you want the state to fight that inflation adjustment funding? Do you want the state to fight it, or do you want it? Let's bring it on. Let's use it. Um, I want to advocate for how it is used. If the legislature or the go the legislature or the governor will decide what it, what does what direction they're going to go on that appeal. Are you, are you going to push for that Ted, money? Uh, my, my opponent talks about the will of the voters. The will of the voters was to have an inflation increase. That was very clear. And I think it's a travesty that our voters had to sue their own leadership in order to, in, in order to bring that to fruition. We need an advocate at the State Department of Education. We need an advocate at the legislature for our public schools. It was the voters' will, and I think that that money should get to, to schools and to classrooms. Uh, Tucson Unified School District Ethnic Studies Program ended. Is that good for Arizona? Well, I think that um, as an issue of, uh, of local control, um, I think this is a situation where actually the Tucson Unified School District has made some modifications to that program uh, to fit with the law that is best with uh, Tucson Unified. And as somebody who's in favor of local control, um, I, I'd say a program that I think is continuing down there and should. It was a hot button issue. Some said the program indoctrinated students would be to resent America. It, was that a valid concern? Ted, it's, it's interesting. Um, I, I took uh, Chicano literature and history when I was in, when I was in college. Um, I also went to University of Chicago and had lunch with Milton Friedman once. One does not make me a socialist and Marxist, and going to Chicago doesn't make me a free market economist. What it makes me is well educated, and we need those same kind of perspectives for all of our students. You talk about local control. Tucson wanted to have this system, this program in place, and the state said no. Was that a good decision by the state? The reason that the state said no is because it was a segregated system, and that's what we decided was not appropriate many, many years ago. Um, in education, that we need to educate our children and work with them together so they can understand the issues that they're all facing. And that's not what was happening in Tucson, and I understand that it's back again. How was it a segregated system? Because um, Hispanic children were put into certain programs and other children were not allowed Ted, into let's those be very, programs. Very clear. Hispanic children were not put into programs. What, this, what, what the program was is a, it's a class from the perspective of, of, of Mexican-Americans in the United States. By the way, from, we have history from the perspective of many people in the United States, but the class was for every student. Any student could enroll in that class. There That's was not no why the law was changed. There was that no segregation. That was not the facts. So you're saying segregation, you're saying no segregation. I had not heard that, it. Which, that what my opponent said is I've that, heard is that, that is, students That is were, why the law was changed, to ensure that programs would not be segregated. What my opponent said is that students were put into the program. That, that's simply not true. All right, uh, academic improvement. Uh, sh how should we reward schools? How should we reward teachers um, in terms of just trying to get a better system out there, a better product, if you will. How do you do that? I don't think that comes from just merely dangling a carrot and money in front of a person's face. We need to make sure that we have content experts in our classroom and we need to ensure that that people come to teaching for the love of teaching and that's because they want to share their passion and their love with students and we're turning everything into an economic equation do and you, that's very you, sad to me. Do you think teachers are making enough money right now? I think we have to look at a compensation system that rewards or or compensates is a better choice of word, Ted. Compensates our teachers not just for being in a classroom for so many years and for just having so many levels of education. We have to look at what they're really doing with our children, but that can't come from just a standardized test because then we've seen that the results become Ted, merely I, a testing program. I agree, and again, 
we, we, have, we, need, we need to have standardized tests, but other indicators that get students ready for life after high school, CTE certificates, AP credits, proficiency in multiple languages, those need to be meaningfully included in our schools. Our, and, they and, have and, to be and what driven by the student, though. It has to be the student's absolutely. passion that wants that no to go question. that direction. Now we're steering children in directions. Again, I'm, I'm not talking about now, and I'm not talking about going back. I'm talking about getting ready for the future. We can change this. We can make those options available so students can choose the one that is best available for them. You may be a student that's ready for CTE classes and that interests you. That should be available to you. So should academic improvement be used to uh, fund or compensate teachers and districts? I think that academic outcomes should, absolutely. And, and those outcomes could include, should include standardized test scores as well as the other measures that I mentioned. And you say? And we've been doing that for years. We've been doing that with Prop 301 where we've been able to compensate teachers for outcomes and have them work as school teams. All right, uh, the evaluation and accountability system. So we're basically saying tests can be used, and you're saying tests, not need, a big... They need to be used very, very carefully. I'm sure when you were in school, when I was in school, we used standardized testing, but it was a small little tool that helped us see where our children were going. We weren't making it to serve the system rather than the children. Every time we talk about education, it's, it seems to be more and more about the grown-ups every day and our poor children keep getting lost. Last word. I, I don't think it's true at all. I think that what we're looking for is a system, and I'm not certain what classrooms my opponent have been in. I was just in a classroom on Friday, rich in literature, rich in activities, rich in conversation, getting students ready for life after high school with critical thinking skills. Teachers aren't just driven by the assessment. They're looking for much more than that. All right. Each candidate will now give a one-minute closing statement and going in reverse of the opening remarks, we start with David Garcia. Thank you. Uh, Ted, I appreciate the opportunity. I am uh, running, and I am running because I know that I can make a difference in Arizona. There is a clear choice. My opponent has made ending ac academic standards her singular issue and has lost the support of education and business leaders along the way. She also, I also come into this position qualified, having worked at and ran a state agency and having worked with our education leaders. My opponent comes in having um, been part of a parent-led recall and also somebody who had, does not have the experience to lead. And finally, I'm not hiding. I'm ready to go out and speak to voters about my position, about my plan. And my concern is that my opponent has been hiding because she doesn't have answers and because she doesn't have a plan. We need to move forward, get our students ready for life after high school in a state for a state that's competitive and strong. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So please, I look forward to your vote in November. All right, thank you very much. And now with her closing statement, Diane Douglas. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in this evening. It's not enough to say that we must get rid of the federally mandated Common Core standards. We have to have a replacement to take its place. And that means we have to align our classroom curriculum with standards that are owned and controlled by Arizonans, not controlled by federal bureaucrats in Washington, D.C., or ivory tower academics, or quite frankly, people that just want to make a dollar off our poor children. You parents, you know what your children need to be well-educated, and you were never invited to this table to ask what you needed for your children. Our classroom teachers were never invited to the discussion, yet they're the ones that bring learning to life every single day for your children. Our plan is simple, common sense back to the classroom, local control to the schools, and make sure parents have the tools they need for a great education for their children. Thank you for your vote. All right, thank you. And thank you for watching the special vote 2014 debate featuring candidates for superintendent of public instruction. Arizona Horizons next debate will be our governor's debate. It's set for Monday, September 29th, a special one hour clean elections governor's debate here on Arizona Horizon. That's it for now. I'm Ted Simons, thanks for joining us you have a great evening. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you.